Hey everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Bucker Designs. I've got a fun little treat box for you today using the cauldron from the Potions and Spells bundle. This is an online exclusive, which means it's not in any catalog. You can only find it online. If you go back to my blog today, I will have it linked along with a supply list. Free PDF has supply lists and measurements as well. Um, this project is pretty simple. I have put the candy in a cello bag. These are actually three by 11 cello bags that I got on Amazon. Um, and inside I have some chocolate covered sunflower seeds. They are delicious. I linked both of them from Amazon. If you're looking for them, um, you can find them on my blog. All right, well, let's get started. We're going to do some coloring today and I'm going to use my Stampin' Blends. Um, one thing that I am going to color also is the cauldron. Now, I you can skip this step if you want, but I wanted to add a little bit of dimension to it. So I'm going to stamp it on basic gray and then add just some shading in with my dark smoky slate marker. And I, you can see here the artist has really kind of given us a clue as to where the shading needs to be. So I'm just gonna kind of follow these lines around. Now, at first you're gonna think, whoa, that is really, really dark, but it's going to dry much, much lighter, I promise. I'm gonna go under the lip there like that and then just kind of pull that in. And then you can take your light. Now the light really, you won't be able to see it at all. Um, but if you take it and just kind of help you kind of smooth out the edges like that, um, it'll give you more of like a smooth edge. All right, so we've got that done. Set that aside to dry for a while. And we're gonna stamp the bird. Now everything in this set has coordinating dies, which makes it really easy to um, cut out. But there is one thing we're gonna use that does not have dies, and it's the bubbles. The bubbles, I guess, are intended to be stamped on the background behind your cauldron, but because there's nothing behind my cauldron, I went ahead and cut them out. And I'll show you, it's not too, too difficult. Now for my bird, he's probably a black bird, but I have found that our uh, basic black stamp and blends are so dark that you really lose detail um, if you use them. And this guy has so many little details on him, I didn't wanna do that. So I'm gonna use Smoky Slate and he'll look black enough, I think. Now I'm gonna take my dark Smoky Slate and again, I'm gonna go under wherever there would be a shadow, okay, under those feathers, kind of here, maybe add in a little bit like this. And then you can go back with your light and just kind of blend those together, leaving the top of his head pretty light because that's where the lightest part of him would be. All right now I'm gonna take my pumpkin pie and I'm gonna color his beak. One thing you have to be careful with here when we get down to the legs is that it's really, really, really narrow. So just take your color and just kind of dot it there on his legs and in his on his feet. That will uh, help you stay in the lines. Just kind of dot, dot, dot that color in. All right, while I have my pumpkin pie out, I'll start coloring my books. I just kind of went with Halloween colors. So of course this is pumpkin pie for this bottom book. I'm gonna just do dark. And then this one right here, I'm gonna take the dark and do the spine with the dark. And then switch over to the light and just color in the, the pages, with the light. Um, I've got Highland Heather and we will color that. Let's see, let's do light Highland Heather. And then we can take the dark and just add some color there to the spine. And then last but not least, I've got Daffodil Delight, and I'm gonna do the spine with the dark, like that, and come back with the light and color that in. Um, for the bubbles, I am going with Lemon Lime Twist. And I'm gonna start with my light Lemon Lime Twist, and like we did with a bird, I'm just gonna give them 
give it all just a full coating. Now you'll notice when you look at this image, there are bubbles here that are separated from the main image. I'm not gonna color those because we're not gonna cut those out. We're just gonna cut out this kind of solid cluster here of bubbles. Now I'm gonna take my dark and just kind of go, again, I'm putting a shadow wherever anything overlaps something else. You wanna add in a shadow. And there will be a shadow down here where the cauldron will be. Most of this will not be seen, but I want it to be a little bit darker here, right where it peeks out from the cauldron. Okay, let's see, let me get my lids back on and I'm gonna start with my paper snips. And you wanna cut away all the extra cardstock, just get it out of the way, okay? And then just start going around, staying on the outside of the black line. Just a tiny little hair away from that black line. And that's gonna create a white border, very narrow white border on the outside of your image. And if you're like me and your cuts aren't perfectly smooth and rounded, um, this will, the, it will deceive the eye because your eye is only gonna see that black line. Then it's not gonna see all the, the white part on the outside. All right, so we've got that. Now let's bring over our cut and emboss machine and we will cut out the rest of this. I think we can run them all through at the same time and take a look at the cauldron. You can see now how the, that color has lightened up significantly. There's some other choices in here if you want to play around with the design. Uh, there's a black cat. There are several little bottles, like potion bottles, which are really cute. And I have used all of them on different projects, so make sure that you go back to my blog and check it out, because there's lots of things for you to see there. I'll have five total potions and spells projects for you. All right, carefully lay on that top piece, run it through. There's our cauldron and our book and our bird. Okay, let's move that out of the way. And I'm gonna just set these up here because let's make the little box part that goes on the inside. You're gonna need a piece of uh, uh, basic gray that is four by four. On one side, you're gonna score it at one and a half and at two and a half. Is that right? Yes, <laughs> one and a half and two and a half. And then on the other side, you're gonna score it at one and three. So really, it's just a one inch thick box there. Suddenly, I was like, wait a minute. I'm second guessing myself. All right, so if you have your bone folder, Furnish those lines. This box really is not gonna be seen at all. It's gonna be hidden by our cauldron. All right, on this side here with these two score lines, you're gonna snip both score lines. Like that. And then you can use whatever adhesive you want. I'm gonna use liquid glue. It's very humid where I live, so I find that liquid glue is my best bet. Put glue on those middle tabs, fold them up into one side, and then fold the other side over, put adhesive on those inside, and then you just wrap it around like it's giving it a little hug, okay? All right, now let's get our cauldron, and I totally forgot we need two cauldrons. So, you don't have to stamp the second one, but you do need one for the back side. So let's just cut that out real quickly. If you want to stamp it, you can. It'll be, it'll be extra cute. But I just did the front side. Okay, so there are your two cauldrons. We're gonna take our little box and put some glue here like that. And I'm gonna set it right in the middle you want it in between, basically in this section right here, okay? 
And then get your other cauldron, your fancy cauldron, put it up here like this. Now, it's gonna probably require you to stand it up, make sure it's not wobbly. You wanna make sure that the legs are all the same. And there you go. All right, now for the bubbles, I'm gonna just put a thin line of glue right there and adhere that there. Before I forget, I'm gonna add some Wink of Stella. Wink of Stella is like a glitter pen and it really takes your project up a notch. And we definitely think our little bubbly potion is sparkly. All right, let's get dimensionals. And we'll put one right here and one right there. There's the bird. I have cut out one of these happy little label uh, uh, pennants and I'm going to stamp it with a sentiment in pumpkin pie. And then we're just going to take some dimensionals and I don't think I have my many dimensionals here. Let's see. Nope. So I'm just going to use this right here. And I'm only going to put the dimensional on this side over here so that this part, which you can actually take your adhesive and just put a little bit like that, it'll be flush here with the books. Okay, because this has dimensionals and now that has dimensionals and now they're even. All right, and then the, all you have to do is uh, take your cello bag. Let me show you. Fill it. And don't overfill it because then it won't fit. They look like this. Fill it up to about right here and then tie it with your, um, this is a petunia pop ribbon and then cut the top off and there you go. Of course, you can use any candy you want. It's July right now and there are <laughs> very limited choices when it comes to Halloween candy. So I went with what I had. All right, you guys have fun. Check my blog for the links to the things from Amazon, as well as the supply list and the measurements and the two other potions and spells projects. Have fun stamping. Bye.